Are you serious? Are you serious? I have arrived. I'm in Dallas, Texas, getting ready for this powerful Hear the Watchman Conference, sounding the alarm. And I'll be preaching on Sunday morning. My message, the King is coming. But there's some great speakers in this conference. Dr. Irvin Baxter, uh, as well as guys like Russ Dizdar, L.A. Marzulli, Dr. Michael Lake, Michael Bodia, uh, Carl Gallups, uh, Derek Gilbert. The list goes on and on and on. Lisa Havens here. I mean, this will be powerful. Now, let me just say quickly, we've got some breaking news. And so while I'm in this conference in Dallas, I'm going to be focused on prophecy alerts and prophecy points or updates. Okay. Right now, Hamas and Israel have been fighting with each other brutishly over the last 30 hours or so, but they have now come to a truce. According to the reports, Uh, Israel has mounted airstrikes on the Palestinian enclave, all of Gaza, and has deployed extra troops to the border today in response to the longest-range Hamas rocket attack to ever cause casualties in years here there in Israel. After a day of intense fighting across the border, Israel and Hamas agreed to an Egyptian-mediated ceasefire And Palestinian officials said the border appeared to have calmed down by nighttime. An agreement on a ceasefire was reached between Palestinian factions and Israelis by using an Egyptian mediation, according to a senior Palestinian official telling Reuters on condition of anonymity. Hamas TV has also reported that the ceasefire agreement had been reached and Israeli officials did not comment on the report. Now, Monday's violence... Of course, all started because seven Israelis were severely wounded in Tel Aviv after a morning rocket attack on Monday morning hit a house in north of Tel Aviv, injuring all seven members of the family, including two infant children, also killing four dogs and destroying the house. Dozens of explosions rocked the coastal enclave in Gaza, and ambulances and sirens had echoed through the night. In one Gaza neighborhood, people rushed to buy bread in anticipation of maybe another long escalation. As you remember, during the four blood moon tetrad that Mark Biltz and and John Hagee talked about, of course I did too, as well as many others, uh, during that four tetrad blood moon, right in the center between the two and three, there was a 50-day war, the longest war fought between Israel and Hamas. It lasted for 50 days. Over 2,000 Palestinians were killed, over 130 Israelis. So we don't want to see it again, but we've had this blood moon over Jerusalem back on July 27th, the longest blood moon of the century. And we had the blood moon over Washington, D.C. this past January, uh, a super blood moon, a super blood wolf moon over Washington. And I told everyone, this is these two blood moons and are certainly in all both of them happening in the 70th year of Israel's a nation, plus the red heifer was born, plus the altar for the third temple was dedicated, and a lot of other signs that's been taking place. Now, with the fact that there's but there's something going on here. Uh, the President of the United States Monday declared that it is true that the Golan Heights is now totally the property, sovereign property of Israel. Forget about it. Syria, though, is backing down and accepting the fact that Assad is remaining in power there. And the United States has put troops in Iraq and in Syria to protect the Golan Heights, just in case the Russians or the Iranians decide they want to come over top the Golan and attack Israel, which is what the Bible says will happen in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And they would also be partnering up with Turkey according to Ezekiel 38 and 39, which now all three of those nations have held five summits together and they're in agreement over what what goes on in the Middle East. So exactly like the Bible said would would come, has come. But what else is going on in in this current event? Um, Well, uh, besides sirens ringing out and a lot of Israeli people spending the nights buried in bomb shelters, the escalation came just two weeks before the election of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who's fighting for his political life to remain as the Prime Minister of Israel 
and uh, he's been campaigning a very tough line against Palestinian militants. So what does this all mean? Netanyahu cut short his visit to the United States. He was in the White House when the rocket attack took place in Tel Aviv. His phone began to blow up on the cell phone, and uh, the president gave him the green light to go home and deal with these issues. So Netanyahu did not get to speak at the APAC meeting, but uh, uh, this is very interesting. Now, I looked at this from a biblical prophecy standpoint. There are several things to remember. People always ask me, will there be a World War III? Well, according to the Bible, there most certainly will be a World War III, a war like you can't imagine. I'm not talking about Psalms 83. I'm not even talking about Gog and Magog here. I'm talking about World War III. And if you go to Revelation chapter 9, you start reading there, let's say verse 13. The, first of all, you have to understand that Apollyon or Abaddon gets released from the bottomless pit. That's verse 11. So let's back this up. Revelation 9, 11. You ready for this? Revelation 9, 11. And they had a king over them. I'm talking about the bottomless pit which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there comes two woes more hereafter. The sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. So now you know where the location of where this war will take place, or at least the area, the Middle East. And four angels were loosed, which had prepared for an hour, a day, a month, and a year for to slay the third part of men. Now I believe there's going to be four major events in a one-year period. One event takes place in one hour. I think it must be a m major nuclear, multiple nuclear explosions. Another event takes place in a day. Maybe it's some kind of a battle or another annihilation of some sort. Another is, takes a month to finish, and the fourth one takes a full year to complete. I think this all happens in a one-year period, and it kills one-third of the population of the planet. The number of army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousands. I heard the number of them. That's 200 million man army, okay? And they come over the river Euphrates, all right? Uh, and the river Euphrates dries up to allow it to happen. You can read this in other parts of the book of Revelation, like Revelation 16. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them. And he goes and explains what they look like and how they kill men with fire and with smoke and with brimstone. Okay, and these and tales that uh, sting men, okay, and hurt them. So uh, you can read all of that. It's a very, very wicked confrontation. It is a World War III, and it kills one third of the population. So there's some biblical prophecies still in process, but right now everyone's talking about a peace agreement. But remember what it says in 1 Thessalonians 3 it says, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh. Now, I really think there is going to be this peace agreement soon to be signed. It could very well happen even as, as early as this fall. It's the, the, the plan's going to be released after the election, which is April 9th. Then the process will begin for several months. And how will it be a two-state solution? I hope it isn't, but it might be. It probably will be if you study biblical prophecy, especially in Genesis 25, 23. It really looks like Rebecca was told by God, look, in your womb is two nations and two manner of people. The one will be stronger than the other and the elder will serve the younger. That would certainly look like Israel and Palestine and look like the uh, Palestinians would be serving in the Israelis. But I'm not, it, I don't know yet, okay? So we don't know. You shouldn't part the land. We were told that in Joel 3, 2. We're told that in the book of Zechariah. But... God told Israel to do a lot of things they didn't do. So we'll just wait and see how this plays out. One thing's for sure, some kind of a covenant with many gets signed. And you can read about that in Daniel 9, 27. And it, and it, it lasts for seven years. And in the midst of that is certainly the abomination of desolation. So it's very possible, folks, that we're about to see that develop even late this fall. Keep an eye open. We're here at the Prophecy Conference, the Hear the Watchman Conference in Dallas, Texas. I'm going to give you prophecy alerts, prophecy updates, 
prophetic points for the next few days as I'm here constantly. I'll stay on top of it. I'll talk with other uh, speakers and ministers and people. We'll keep you up to speed. I'll be back with more in just a minute. Give your life to Jesus Christ, folks. Seriously, we're running out of time. 